Hi guys, welcome to our channel Piping Mantra. For today, we are here with a new exciting interview questions video for piping. This would be our last video on piping interview questions for this year. Our intent is to help all the piping engineers or designers out there in cracking every interview in these tough times. So without making this intro any longer, let's get into our video. First, which parameters will you check while checking piping isometrics? Bill of material, pipe routing with respect to general arrangement drawing, supporting arrangement, details of insulation, Hydro test pressure, painting specs, and provision of vent and drains at appropriate locations, title block details, north direction, flow arrows. Next, how do you support any small size HDP or PVC that is plastic pipe? It should be supported continuously by using channels or angles so that the line should not sag or fall from the sleeper or rack due to uneven expansion because of hot temperature. Next, what do you mean by PWHT? Why is it required? PWHT stands for Post Weld Heat Treatment. This is done to remove residual stress left in the joint which may cause brittle fracture. Next, what is the minimum thickness of pipe that requires stress relieving to be done as per B31.3? 19 mm thick. Next, how do you calculate the pipe to pipe spacing? Pipe spacing in mm is equal to DO that is OD of small size pipe in mm plus DT that is OD of flange of large size pipe in mm by 2 plus thickness of insulation in mm plus clearance that is 25 in case of flanged pipe or 50 mm in case of non-flanged pipe. Remember, this is the minimum distance required and actual distance should be equal or higher. Next, where and why bleed valve is used. If the conveyed fluid is hazardous or under high pressure, a branch fitted with the bleed valve is inserted between the gauge and its isolating valve to relieve the pressure and or drain the liquid before servicing. It can also be used to sample or for adding a comparison gauge. Next, why control valves are usually flanged? Control valves are usually flanged for the ease of installation and removal during maintenance. Next, where wall control valves are used? Wall control valves suitable where nature of fluid is slurry form or handling two-phase flow, having particle in suspension for non-critical and critical fluids having a fluid temperature to suit the soft seat material and where relatively low pressure drop is required across control valve. They have side mounted actuator. Next, where butterfly control valve is used. It is used for large size piping network handling clean fluid or low pressure drop across control valve and normally soft seated control valve. Metal seated valves used for higher temperatures. Next, how control valve block valve should be located? They should be as close to control valves as much as possible considering drain requirements and handling clearance. At least one of the block valves should be placed in vertical so that spool can be removed allowing the control valve to be removed. Next, how bypass valve and control station should be located? Bypass valve should be near the inlet branch point, preferably not above the control valve. It should have minimum 200 to 300 clearance between actuator and valve for removal of control valve while maintenance. Next, how control station should be supported? It should be supported in such a manner that control station piping is self-supporting even if the control valve is removed. 
Normally, control stations are supported on exit side elbows of bottom run of control valve. Next, what are the types of flow measuring devices? Flow measuring devices are rotameter, ultrasonic flow meter, pitot tube, turbine flow meter, venturi flow meter, orifice plate, magnetic flow meter and Coriolis flow meter. Next, what is the piping and instrument scope of supply for orifice meter? Piping provides gaskets and nut bolts and tappings from orifice plate that will most probably be half inch nipple with two block walls and orifice flange assemble that is set of two flanges that is optional instrument provides the orifice plate along with the flange assembly and tubing connection downstream of block walls up to dp transmitter next how orifice flange taps should be oriented for liquid or and steam line it should be horizontal or 45 degree down from horizontal on both sides for gas and vapor lines it should be vertical or 45 degree to vertical on both sides taps at 0.5 inches so that is it guys for today's video we love reading your comment and suggestions so please comment below we do read every single one of your comment if you like this video please hit the like button and share with your friends and colleagues who may find it useful if you have any time please check out our other videos over there